Thanks for the invite. It's exciting to come and chat and a lovely drive. And I'm just glad it wasn't snowing on your way up. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes coming up this direction, and I'm from southern Ontario, so coming up this way can sometimes be a bit of a journey. So I'd like to start by just giving you a bit of background and contextual information that might um, help kind of ground what I'm going to describe about how our community health center how our community health center, can you hear me at the back? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Uses the CIW for strategic planning. So a couple of things. Um, I've been executive director of the Woolwich Community Health Center for 14 years. Uh, prior to that, I had a, um, a life, a professional life in health planning. So that gives you a little bit of context to, I think, how we've used the CIW and why it's been important. Um, and my, my academic background is actually in community psychology. So again, a lot of focus on community planning, participatory action research, that type of thing. Woolwich Community Health Center as an organization, we're celebrating our 25th uh, anniversary this year. And we serve the rural communities that wrap around the cities of Kitchener and Waterloo. Um, so it's primarily a rural CHC, um, but certainly not as rural as some. In terms of um, our health center strategic planning work, we engage in three key activities on a cyclical basis. So we do a community assessment, um, we do uh, a review of our vision, mission, values, priority populations, and then we do strategic uh, planning, strategic priority setting. And we're constantly in, you know, a four to five year cycle of those key activities. And the, the key um, area where we have been using the CIW has been in our community assessment work. So that's the first big kind of casting the net wide activity that encompasses our whole process of strategic planning. And we, we do that community assessment to really um, help not only our community health center, but other key partners and other key planners in our area understand um, in the broadest possible <coughs> sense what the needs are in the community as well as the strengths and capacities. So we're not just looking at deficits, but we are trying to look at the, the biggest possible picture. And so by doing the community assessment, that of course is really helpful to us in terms of thinking about our role as an organization. What should our mandate be when we understand the picture of our community? What does it mean for us as a health center in terms of our own vision? our own mission, our own values? What does it mean in terms of um, the priority populations that we should be focusing on? The folks in, in our catchment area who are facing the greatest barriers to health, the greatest barriers to access. It helps us, of course, then even narrow down further in terms of thinking about, you know, for the next three to five years, what are those strategic priorities that we should be focusing on as an organization? But that community assessment also helps us figure out who should we, we be working with? Who are the partners that we should engage with? Where is the development work that we should do with others to help us uh, address that, that community picture? We also um, historically have found it very important to share the results of our community assessment with our funders, uh, with regional government, provincial government, township government, um, you know, in more recent years with our LIN, um, with other partner agencies and with the community at large to help build that understanding of our community picture and our community issues. And um, the assessment process, just by its very nature, also uh, takes on the role of being a very significant community engagement process for us. We're typically involving more than 400 people um, in our community, in our community assessment work through their involvement in our steering committee, through focus groups, through key informant um, interviews, through community surveys. So it's, it's also, um, it also achieves that kind of objective for us in terms of really connecting with people in our community. I mentioned a steering committee. Um, our community assessment work is always guided by a steering committee that's comprised primarily of community residents. So we're making sure that we're um, engaging the community just in the, in the very process of planning and carrying out our community assessment. So where does the CIW fit into that work? 
Um, back in 2007, the AOHC conference featured Roy Romeo as one of the key speakers. And when I heard um, Roy talk about the CIW, I really got quite excited about it. Um, it really, the whole concept of the CIW, which was still, I think, in, in some development stages at that point, not fully development uh, developed, really uh, spoke <coughs> to our CHC, I felt. Well, to all CHCs and to mine in particular, um, in terms of you know connecting with our vision statement, connecting to our own historical approach to doing community assessments. And it really felt like the CIW domains aligned um, with so much of what we as a CHC attend to in our community assessment work, um, day to day, on the ground, in our work with clients in the community. So it wasn't just a big idea. It felt to me like it had a very, very practical application. And it also felt um, to me that for the first time, there was a systematic, evidence-based, credible tool that we could use. Um, even though the CIW was uh, developed as a framework for use on a national scale, it felt to me like we could probably apply it pretty ready, readily and, and quite appropriately to the work that we do as a community health centre at the community level, um, not only to assess but also uh, to measure the type of work that we do uh, in partnership with others and also by extension to help us drive change. And um, you know, what's, what's critical for us as a community health center, and I anticipate this is similar to, to many, if not all of you, that you work with partners who are beyond the health sector. And as a rural CHC, that's very true for, for us. In fact, most of our partners are not other health agencies. They're, they're church groups, they're service clubs, they're social service agencies, education, and so the CIW really appealed in terms of recognizing the breadth of that partnership. Um, and, and so the, the other, um, I guess the other exciting application I felt was that the CIW really does dovetail quite nicely, it aligns quite well with social determinants of health. To me it felt like it, it's a different, it's a slightly different framework. Um, it comes with a research base and an evidence base that's pulled together in one piece but it really ties so closely to um, the known quantities of the social determinants of health approach. Um, and it really lent a common language to, uh, to that kind of work. So a couple of years after hearing uh, Roy Romano speak, we were beginning to get ready for our next community assessment. And so um, meeting with our program coordinator, who at RCHC is kind of a lead role in terms of our community assessment work, we decided that we would, um, in doing our next assessment in 2009-2010, use the CIW uh, domain of community vitality. Because at that time, that was the domain that seemed the most developed um, and the most sort of ready to apply and fit into our assessment work. So in our assessment, we really tried as much as we could to gather local data on as many of the eight indicators in that community vitality domain. Um, you know, using Stats Canada data, using local, um, you know, local assessment data, using our own surveys and focus groups. And what we found from that application of the community vitality domain um, from the CIW was that it, it confirmed a couple of hunches that we had, but had never really um, explored in a full and detailed kind of way. Um, it, it really spoke to our historical sense that our rural residents had a strong sense of community. And using the CIW domain of community vitality uh, gave us some language and some tools to, I think, more credibly uh, assess that. And it led us then to ask the question, okay, so as a community health center, how could we harness that knowledge about community vitality to help make the lives of our rural residents better? So kind of leading from the assessment, asking the question, so what? And what can we as a CHC do about it? So it actually led us to some very concrete follow-up work from that assessment. One was focusing on supporting um, other community groups and organizations, not just our community health center, with volunteer workshops. So trying to enhance the volunteer capacity of our rural community so that volunteers could make a difference. 
feeding into that community vitality, feeding into that sense of belonging. Um, we also had another very concrete objective, and that was around supporting newcomers to Wellesley Township, which is one of the rural townships we serve. Um, what came from our assessment is we really got a strong sense that um, while there was a, a strong sense of belonging in the community for newcomers coming to that particular rural township, there was a feeling that it was hard to get to know new people. So again, one of the concrete objectives for us, one of the initiatives that we undertook, was really focusing on um, developing some initiatives to make well, uh, newcomers feel welcome, you know, and working with different groups in the community around that work. So those are the two um, key kind of outcomes from that initial assessment work that we did when we first started using the Community Index of Wellbeing. We're now into our next assessment. So we actually started um, our follow-up community assessment uh, last fall. We're at the tail end of that work right now. And what we decided to do this time around um, is call our assessment a community well-being assessment and actually use the entire uh, CIW framework as the parameters for doing our assessment work. So we're using all eight domains and that has been the framework on which we've based our community assessment. Um, we're in the midst, um, actually at the tail end, of finishing up our sort of primary data collection. So we've done community surveys. So we have, I think, somewhere around 650 community surveys back. We've completed um, a number of focus groups. We're expecting to finish up with about 23 to 25 community focus groups, another, another seven to ten key informant interviews, and, and all of those tools for information gathering are organized around the eight domains of the CIW. And you know, our steering committee has really um, played uh, uh, an essential role in helping us figure out what are the pieces of information that can uh, yield for us specific indicator-related data in each of the eight domains, and which are the indicators that we have to specifically gather data around. So um, that was a very significant upfront piece of work that our steering committee helped us with. Um, so what I imagine over time is that you know, with the use of the CIW as our planning tool, we will again, of course, be sharing our community assessment results with our planners, our funders, all levels of local government. Um, because we've been doing this assessment actually jointly with three other agencies, one other Lynn-funded health agency and two social service agencies, we've already expanded the conversation and education about the community index of well-being. We've gotten a lot of local press about it. Um, it's, it's becoming more known, um, not just in our circle, but among the agencies that are working with us on the assessment work. And what I'm certainly looking forward to over time is as you know, as more CHCs, as more communities use the CIW, uh, along with the regional Ontario CID, uh, CIW report that was released in, um, in April, I think, that, that we'll be able to look at our own CIW-based assessment results and be able to compare ourselves and be able to look at how's our community stack up against our region. What are the regions very engaged with the CIW? How does our region stack up against the province? And is there anything that we can learn about the differences that we see over time? So that, in a nutshell, is our use of the CIW.